I'm Jeffrey Wright. I'm a friend of the Ship Sims. That's my calling. No. Oh, uh, there's also. more. There's there's a little bit. <laughs> there's so much more. Ship show. All right. Hi, Jeffrey. Hey, hey what's up? Hey. Thank you for joining us today. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Uh, bye. <laughs> How are you doing? I'm maintaining, you know, hanging in there, uh, like I hope we all are. And, uh, you know, we're doing, we're doing as well as can be expected. Right. Good news here in New York is that uh, the cases are subsiding, which is, uh, which is encouraging and mm -hmm. beautiful spring day outside. But we're still obviously not back to normal, but we're on the path toward normalcy. So that's, uh, that's encouraging. We would never be able to do you justice. Can you introduce yourself? To everyone? I'm Jeffrey Wright. I'm a friend of the Ship Sims. That's my calling. No. no there's more. Right, there's, also... there's a little bit. More. There's so much more. I think there's a little bit more. Jeffrey is a very talented and incredible actor of both stage and screen. Yeah, I guess, you know, most recently, uh, I am the newly awakened uh, Bernard uh, from Westworld, if you haven't caught it yet season three just ended this past sunday no spoilers this is a spoiler uh, but, free space you know, no spoilers no spoilers but uh you know i guess that's the latest also have a movie on netflix that opened last friday called all day and a night which is very different than westworld but uh that's what i do from time to time when i'm not trying to figure out how to get to the ocean and uh and catch a couple of waves um you know i do a little acting here you're a big surfer yeah uh, well not lately as right. you can see, you know, when we went to college, you know, some of the folks used to talk about the uh, freshman 15, you know, you got the, you're going to that 15 fan. Oh, this is, I'm on the COVID-19 right here. Ooh, like, okay. I, I haven't been in the ocean in some time. I need to get out there, get myself back, get my head, uh, my, my body, spirit back in line, you know, so someday, someday. So people might be wondering how we know each other. Um, and so I guess... Jeffrey, people don't know this, but he was quite the figure skater back in his day. Uh, yeah, you mean aside from the part that we grew up together, they want to yeah, know yeah, how yeah, we... Yeah, 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 yeah. Down the street, right? <laughs> We'd carpool to the rink and uh, go to practice. <laughs> Early mornings. Yeah. yeah. But we actually met a couple of years ago, right? We met in LA. LA. Yeah, at the airport. We were fresh off of the Olympics and we yeah. had been in LA. I believe it was Oscars weekend. And Something we were like flying that. back to New York and we were taking a red eye, right? Yeah. Mike, was it a red eye? Yeah, it was a red eye. Yeah. And so we were going through TSA, uh, mm -hmm. the security at LAX, and I was scooping up my belongings and getting my bag. And I looked up and I made eye contact with, with Jeffrey. And yeah. you looked up at me and you made direct eye contact and kind of like, what's up, me? Yeah. There was like a little yeah. recognition there. So I was like, oh, gosh, like, Alex Shibutani, man. <laughs> who's, who's, who's he looking at? Ship Sims, baby. Yeah. <laughs> and this was right after Westworld season one, I believe. Yeah, and you guys had your medals, you know. It was like shortly after the Olympics. I was super stoked, man. Yeah. I had left my medals at home. Right. You know, as I mentioned, I think, in the Instagram post. But <laughs> Yeah. You know, I, you I'll still have to show the Instagram post. <laughs> So Jeffrey, I've seen all of your Instagram posts about the amazing fundraiser you started to support your community in Brooklyn. Can you tell us more about it? Yeah, you know, for the first uh, week or so of the lockdown, you know, I kind of said, wow, you know, I was doing Batman in London right before I got back here to New York. We've been hustling with that. I've been on a lot of planes over the last few years, working on a lot of projects. And I thought, wow, I'll just chill for a little bit, you know, and ride this thing out. And then, you know, I got increasingly kind of frustrated. You know, we're all, I think, feeling at times a little bit helpless and a little bit agitated, uh, particularly now as it's gone on. And so after a while, um, I started involving myself in a project with a couple of friends of mine here in Brooklyn who are restaurant owners. Uh, we call ourselves Brooklyn for Life. And we started on March 27th delivering really simply 200 meals to Brooklyn Hospital, which is just outside my window over here. And it is where Anthony Fauci was born. Um, Dr. Fauci. Uh, Dr. Fauci was born just across uh, the way here uh, in Fort Greene, Brooklyn, at this hospital. 
And uh, it's a safety net facility. It serves the entire community, independent hospital. And so what we started doing on March 27, 200 meals per day to that hospital to augment their cafeteria because obviously people are working 15, 16 hours a day. Many of them were going home. And so um, uh, the vice president for uh, external affairs over there, a wonderful guy named Lenny Singletary said, yeah, we will, you know, we could use that assistance. And so with a friend named Mike Thompson, who's been a restaurant owner here and uh, for 25 years, a place called Brooklyn Moon, another friend called Vito Rondazzo, who, who's Italian food. My kids and I just like, you know, we, we return to almost daily, you know, over the past 15 years since he's been there. We've eaten so many of his pizzas, I can't even describe it. But he initiated in some ways. He was having customers uh, call in to order pizzas on behalf of staff at the hospital. But we got together. Uh, Vito linked me up with the hospital. We went down and met with Lenny and he said, you know, yeah, we could use your support. So that's how it started. Me just trying to look out for a couple of friends, particularly Mike, because his hot, his rather his restaurant wasn't delivery oriented. It's a social space. It was like the, the Brooklyn spoken word center back in the day. Uh, Chris Rock, I think was performed there when he used to live in this neighborhood, Erica Badu gave her first New York performance at his spot, but he wasn't really delivery oriented. So I said, okay, I'll try to boost this on social media and see if we can fundraise. We set up a GoFundMe page, March 25th. As of today, we've delivered over 100,000 meals because we expanded to um, what is now 11 medical facilities um, here in Brooklyn, actually one in lower Manhattan, all 11 FDNY EMS stations in Brooklyn. Uh, and even that reached to some seniors who were shut in. So we crossed the 100,000 meal mark just yesterday, averaging about 2,500 meals per day now with a circle of over 40 restaurants, all small businesses who are trying to keep afloat in difficult days. So, uh, you know, that's kept me busy. Um, we've raised about half a million dollars from individual donors. Um, almost evenly split between small dollar donors and big dollar donors. So for example, Daniel Craig, you know, my James Bond brother, I reached out to him early. I said, Hey man, we got this thing going on. You help us out. So he's given us a significant uh, chunk of change. Jay-Z contributed, Spike Lee's contributed and, and others. Chris uh, Rock as well. But it's been evenly split between those, you know, those known donors and the, and the lesser known do donors who through GoFundMe are given five bucks, 10 bucks, you know, 25 bucks. It's been really kind of democratic and gratifying in that way. And now we have just secured commitment from our first corporate partner, which is AT&T slash Warner Media. So they're going to give us uh, 250000 Wow. to keep going. So we've raised about $750,000. We still need more, as you can imagine, with 2,500 meals per day that's flying out the door. But I wouldn't say that it, it, it's been without its stresses, though. But it's sure. been, but I, I kind of find this stuff fun anyway. So it's kept me focused and engaged and feeling a little less helpless in the midst of all this. Well, huge props to you and all of your friends and collaborators, because it's a massive amount of work, but you're truly making a difference. Well, I thank you, Maya. You know, we do all we do what we can. And, you know, this is really all grassroots. What's really cool about it, too, is it's all these small business restaurant owners. They really feel so energized that they're able to find meaningful um, work in the midst of this. And that, you know, okay, all of us, we all eat every day. But how critical is it for these, you know, frontline folks to be well fed in the midst of this? It's pretty cool. All grassroots stuff, you know, and me being the loudmouth, letting everybody know about it. You know? Well, that's one of the things that we've always appreciated and respected about you. Not only do you have this job, this amazing skill that you gift to the world with your performances and the stories that you tell, but also uh, how much of a humanitarian you are and how thoughtful you are uh, of the people, not only in your community, but people everywhere. So I think that's one of the things that we've always uh, looked up to you for. Well, I just I just really wanted those uh, jerk wings over at Brooklyn Moon to still be there when this is all done. And I wanted to get some more lasagna and, you know, goat cheese salad, salads for my friend Vito. You know, it was really started off pretty, pretty basic, you know, and <laughs> We just expanded into into something that's been yeah it's been wide reaching and I'm really I really feel very good that we've been able, been able to do this I hope we can carry on yeah for as long, long as it takes so Jeffrey how can people help you well you know I, everybody is facing their challenges right now if you can if you'd like to support you can go to our GoFundMe page 
which is uh, you can just Google GoFundMe Brooklyn for Life, or you can go to our very uh, uh, efficient, simple website, brooklynforlife.org, and you can check out our story there. You can check out our video there that we put together, and you can click on a button that will take you to the GoFundMe site. So, um, yeah, brooklynforlife.org. That's who we are, Brooklyn for Life, baby. And you directed, edited, and produced that video yourself. Yeah, it was it was a labor of love. It's, you know, over the course of two weeks as I was getting all these like literal, like, you know, what I found were like Christmas presents, you know, from all the folks who were willing to contribute to send in messages that I wove together for the video. So it was pretty cool. Uh, it was actually Daniel Craig's idea because the, he had done a video for the NHS in the UK, mm-hmm. just a simple thank you video. And he said, hey, Hey, you know, why, why, don't, uh, why don't you consider doing a video for Brooklyn for Life? And uh, I said, hey, yeah, I think I will consider <laughs> doing that. <laughs> That's a great idea. Good old and 007. So, yeah, and so Daniel was the first to send me a video. And uh, also uh, Spike uh, Lee. I reached out to Spike, um, who, who used to, who grew up in this neighborhood. Right, big Knicks uh, fan, Spike Lee. Yeah, you know, we've got the Nets over here, but he's a Knicks Knicks fan because they predate, uh, uh, you know, the Nets. But he is 40 acres and a mule. Uh, His offices are in our neighborhood Mm -hmm. here in Fort Greene. So, yeah, Spike is Brooklyn for life. So he, uh, you know, he was he and Daniel were the first to kind of join the uh, join the party. But the message of the video is one of solidarity with community. It's about love for community. Uh, it's about love specifically for Brooklyn and it's about being inclusive, you know, often, you know, we see these things and it's only like kind of known faces. And I wanted to make sure that we had, you know, the doctors and nurses and the restaurant folks represented in this thing equally along with all of us, uh, you know, you know, quote unquote, celeb type knuckleheads. You know, I really wanted to make sure that it was, um, it really exp- the grassroots nature of what we're trying to do and, and, and who we are as an organization. So if, you know, you can't give just, you know, it'd be great if you could just share the video and share that message because um, it's, uh, it's a message about Brooklyn, but it's also a message about, uh, you know, about love, for, love for community and coming together as one in, in, uh, in challenging times. I had briefly been asking you what you were trying to do to relax. Um, (laughs) you've been, you've clearly put yourself to work. You've been doing amazing things, uh, with your community for your community. I have a suggestion first. Your voice is amazing. I highly recommend, uh, that you record your own guided meditation, uh, because I've been listening to Stephen Fry talk about the, uh, the lavender fields, yeah, the lavender fields in Provence. And I think that if you did a, a a guided meditation about Brooklyn, or something like yeah. that, that could be a yeah. fun way to incorporate uh, the GoFundMe and the fundraising that you're doing and utilize your tremendous oratory skills. Cool, you mean aside from the wine that I've been drinking? Uh, <laughs> that's, that's been my choice for relaxation, I suppose, but um, could be. Now, so did, did Stephen Fry, is he in Provence right now? Is that is that why he was? No, so Alex uses a meditation app and they have a bunch of different readers. So basically Alex is asking if he can record something so he can listen to your voice to find <laughs> peace. This isn't, this isn't even sponsored, but I use the Calm app and Stephen Fry is one of the people that they got to uh, voice one uh, of these meditations, these guided meditations. Ah, uh, very cool. And I very just cool. think that Jeffrey, you know, n- not Bernard. We don't want Bernard for this. Yeah. We, we want like, yeah. you know, Jeffrey. Brooklyn you never know, you never know which Bernard you're going to get. Right, so, you right, know, of course. Uh, but, but actually I think my kids uh, use that, that app. Mm. So I'll, I'll, have to, I'll have to look into that. Um, yeah. The, yeah. I could, you know, read you, what should I read you? Like good night moon or something like <laughs> that. Or moon, the ugly duckling. Uh, yeah, they will. Alex will take anything. Yeah. I'm just saying free ideas here all the time. Just very call cool. me up. You know where to find very me. Good. You obviously have a very uh, extensive credit list. Are there any movies that you recommend for us to watch? Things that you've done or things that you really uh, enjoy seeing? I'll tell you some movies that I've done that could be uh, worth your time that haven't been seen by a lot of folks. There's a movie, a couple movies that I did with Jim Jarmusch that I really love. Uh, One called Only Lovers Left Alive, just kind of a vampire story. Jim and I also did a movie called um, Broken Flowers, 
which uh, which is a bit of a comic turn that was fun. And a movie I did with Ang Lee called Ride with the Devil, which is a Civil War film about um, the kind of outskirts of the war, the uh, Kansas-Missouri border war and irregulars. And Jesse James came from here. Uh, Wild Bill Hick Hickok, a lot of these guys who went on, uh, you know, further west and made their names as kind of notorious figures in American history began uh, in this war between uh, Kansas and Missouri because it was, it was a guerrilla war. It was a pretty dirty war. But anyway, we'll Ride with the Devil, I play a guy who somehow a freed slave fighting on the side of the Confederacy for reasons that you should explore. It's a beautiful film, beautiful film, Ang Lee film. So check uh, check that. That's one that you know few people have seen that I've done that I really, really love. But I was watching a film the other day. It's really a beautiful love story at the end. I watched it. I hadn't seen it in a while because I was I was asked by IMDB to do, you know, talk about films that kind of changed my life. And it was a hard question to ask, but I thought about this film because of one of the performances or one of the actors, because two performances in it are phenomenal, but one of the actors became like kind of like, well, uh, like a kind of like distant mentor to me. And we ended up working together later and that was Gary Oldman. And it's a film called Sid and Nancy. But this film is just unreal. I hadn't seen it in years, watched it. I was like, whoa, Roger Deakins, who won the Academy Award last year. Mm -hmm. Did he win it two years in a row? Uh, I don't know about two, he won for 1917. This was one of his early films. And uh, it's just, it's just stunning. He won for, uh, uh, geez. Uh, I'm looking it up. I'm, I mean, I'm having the assistant of... look it up. Uh, yeah, the yes. researcher over yeah. off screen. Yeah. Uh, of uh, a, a, a Blade Runner. Harrison Ford, uh, yeah. Blade Runner, yeah. My, my so this... TA just told me <laughs> that it was Blade Runner. Yeah. Th thank you, she, thanks Joe. She, yeah, he texted to me as well. So yeah, yeah, Blade Runner, exactly. <laughs> so, so um. Yeah, so one of his early films, so I highly recommend it. It's edgy, it's punk, it's, you know, raw, and it's so incredibly, strangely beautiful at the end of the day. So, yeah. We were really looking forward to No Time to Die. Mm -hmm. um, and so hopefully we'll be able to to see that. I had a, I had a ball working on that uh, film as uh, as I did working on all all the others. And But we did some, uh, we did some pretty special stuff and... You know, can't can't wait to share it uh, share it with folks. I actually took off from Westworld for you know a couple of weeks here and there, and they allowed me to go off and go shoot the Bond, and you know, so I s snuck off and came back. In character, you snuck off like Felix. I, I did. I came back like Bernard. Yeah, mm. <laughs> but we'll see. Uh, you know, hoping theaters can support films uh, by November, and we'll be out there. Uh, but a lot of unknowns right now. Just right. have to be patient, you know, and, uh, and take it from there. So I know towards the beginning of the conversation, we spoke about your deep roots in history and figure skating. If you were to perform to one song for your next performance, what would that be, Jeffrey? Ooh, wow. See, now you put me on the spot. Um, you know what I've had in my head for some weird reason? This is going to be a throwback. I think it's because there's a commercial. It's some, it's like today was like the theme from Get Smart. Da, 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 da. It would probably be a comic routine, but I think I'm going to leave that to you guys. You know, I'm, I'm retired from my skating days now, and I was really pleased to see you, Maya, uh, on Instagram anyway. Do some dance moves there and working out the uh, those moves, and so that was really beautiful to see. So I'm going to I'm going to leave it to you guys and I'm going to wait Maya to see you on skates again. Yeah. Thanks Jeffrey. Cool. We have so many things that we're going to do. We're going to eat, we're going to go you're going to teach us how to surf. We'll do uh, skating. No doubt. Whenever. We've got plans. We'll eat pizza. I, I, now I want that pizza. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's good stuff. Me yeah. in Brooklyn then we'll head to Hawaii. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thanks Jeffrey. Thank you guys. Keep well. Yeah, talk to you later. See ya.